September 21st from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. in Cuyahoga Heights. Check out cleanwaterfest.com for more information. Wake up with football every morning and listen to my new podcast, NFL Daily, with Greg Rosenthal. Five days a week, you get all the latest news, the best analysis delivered by the time you get your coffee. This show hits on every single game, every single week, but I can't do it alone, so I'm bringing in all the big guns from NFL media. Subscribe today, and you'll immediately be smarter and funnier than your friends. Listen to NFL Daily with Greg Rosenthal on America's number one podcast network, iHeart. Open your free iHeart app and search NFL Daily to start listening. It's time to get step away. All right, one of the best Pink Floyd tribute bands out there are coming back to Northeast Ohio. Wish You Were Here, who will be celebrating not only 50 years of Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here, but they are celebrating 30 years together as a band. They're doing two nights at the Agora, Friday, January 3rd, Saturday, January 4th. I will get you set up for that second night. Tickets, info, everything at agoracleveland.com. Both nights, of course, they'll do Wish You Were Here in its entirety. And all the Pink Floyd classics that you love. So caller 10, these are for you. Wish you were here at the Agora, the second of two shows. 216-578-1007 to win or 800-348-1007. I met Alan. Did you? I gave him marijuana. Oh, great. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 W. God, these, the Eagles are the band that I think of when I was a kid and the radio was on in the car. These were such huge songs. J.D. Souther was from Detroit, just like Glenn Fry, but ended up in California. Don Henley singing, Best of My Love. Brand new song here from Eagles. 100.7. I didn't really hit the post on that, did I? I mean, talking all over. Right. Oh, talking God. after they started singing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's how I do it, Mary. Hey, man, it's your show. Everybody else trying to hit that dumb post. I they do it once post, they start yeah. singing. Yeah, Best of My Love was uh, from On the Border. In 1974, Henley Fry J.D. Souther wrote the song. Great song. Now, I was three years old when this was on the radio, so that's how that's how far back my memory kind of goes, is hearing these on the radio. They'd be on the radio for a while. But um, anyway, it is a deep dive. But um, like I said, I just finished reading this book on 1974 there in Southern California, and it very much was full of uh, Eagles and J.D. Souther and how influential he was with those bands. He would go out with Linda Ronstadt. And, uh, and uh, again, you got to be, you know, in your 50s to know where all this stuff is coming from. But he was pretty good. Mary is thinking of the other song. The better one. Your dad probably turned you on to this, yeah? Oh, yeah. Emotions were a Chicago band. <laughs> See, all these bands came out of gospel groups. And then they would be like, yeah, that's fun, but if you, you know, do you want to be on radio? Do you want to, you know? The Emotions were like an early R&B girl group that were doing gospel songs in Chicago. And then they started doing um, Best of My Love. My Honey and Me, that was another big song from them. Because Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. You know, once they put people, they were a Chicago band. Once they would get all these R&B groups kind of in their uh, coat of many colors. I don't know if she's going to start singing it. Okay, you're, is it worse? It's like you're riding shotgun in my car. Oh, sorry. You know, Alan, I just got done watching my crap swirl down the toilet. And I got to say, it was a lot more entertaining than listening to this show. I don't know why I listen to this show every day. I can't stand it. I really hate this show. But I listen to it all the way through. I love you. Gay thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Gay thoughts. Gay thoughts. I don't like men no more. I thought I like women. Women, 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 women. Oh, boy. 
I just watched my crap. What do you say? I just watched my crap flush. Roll yeah. down the toilet is what I heard. <clears throat> And it was roll down the toilet. Is that what he said? I thought he said I washed, watched my craps roll down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said swirl. Well, oh, let's go back to did. the tape. Know. You know, Alan, I just got done watching my crap swirl down the swirl. toilet. Swirl. Yeah. Yeah. Say- swirl. All right, well, <laughs> gay thoughts. Thank you. Gay thoughts. You ready for the inaugural <gasps> Mayor's Science Fair, Bill? Let's do Mary, it. Mary, are you I'm ready? Nervous. I'm nervous. You yeah, have okay. nothing to be nervous about. There's okay. no bar to clear. I'm ready for the sa- the song or whatever. The- now it's time for Science Yeah, there's immediately an explosion. Oh, They're good. in the laboratory and screaming <laughs> and blood and fire ensues. All right, it's take it perfect. away. Perfect. All right, first up, move over slot machines. I just found my new favorite way to gamble. On August 9th, the FDA approved the first epinephrine na- nasal. Let me start over. The first epinephrine nasal spray for treatment of severe allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Now, I'm severely allergic to shellfish, so this is huge news for me. Um, The spray is called Nephi and is expected to be available by early October and cost only $25 with insurance or $199 for a two-pack without insurance, uh, as opposed to the widely used auto injection, which can reach up to $600. So, combining $200 worth of sprays and the $20 endless shrimp at Red Lobster, I'm ready to put $220 up against the over versus my life. So, mm-hmm. I'm excited about this. Science. Uh, next, researchers report that red Brazilian flowers called Hypenia micrantha Use projectile blasts of pollen to knock rival pollen off of hummingbirds' beaks and replace it with their own. So if a male flower can send a hummingbird away with, like, more of its own pollen and less of its competitors, it increases its chances of siring seeds in the next female flower that the bird visits. Uh, This is particularly important in Cleveland because I think Bill Squire just found his fall personality. Science. Flower cuck? Flower cuck. Yes, no sloppy seconds. Uh (laughs) Lastly, a study showed that as of 2022, roughly one in every eight people across the world is obese, which if you've ever been to a water park seems surprisingly like a low percentage. My part. The report notes that one of the biggest driving factors of obesity's increased prevalence is limited access to and the unaffordability of healthy foods. So, while millionaire one percenters like Alan Cox are drinking $11 liquid salads <laughs> and paying for expensive personal trainers, us chubby lower class citizens are eking by with our heart disease, french fries, and depression. So, Alan, I hope you've been working on your sprints because the only viable thing for us fatties left to do is literally eat the rich. Science. Now it's time for... Explosions notwithstanding, hey. that was pretty good, yeah. right? Also, it's National Cheeseburger Day while we're talking about It really that. is. <laughs> while we're talking about obese people. Congratulations. <laughs> Bill, yeah. where would you get a cheeseburger? Wendy's. Uh, Breakfast <laughs> hours? Or... No. Oh, Regular okay. hours. <laughs> you know I don't have a personal trainer, Mary. Well, I don't know what you do. Sounds I like I know you're rich. I'm not rich. I know you have access to things that us poors don't. You know, you could like buy foods. You could buy your squeezy salads. You can buy money. them. I don't have the money for that. Sure, you do. I have money for chips. You're out. Pops. You're out there buying fifteen dollar sandwiches because that's how much they cost. You don't know anything about me. <laughs> I've had a lot of people, and I have to assume that they're not all rich. I've had a lot of people hit me up. Hey, what's the name of that salad place? What's the name of the salad the website? And I tell them. Now I don't know if they go through with it. But, um, you know, squeezy salads. Salad okay. Power is the company. Salad Power. Hashtag not an ad. I don't get anything from it. Um, where was the science? It was all science. science. What are you talking about? It was all about? science. All science. Science is a liar sometimes. Mm-hmm. The science behind developing a nasal treatment for severe yep. allergic reactions. I think that's really cool. That is actually very cool. It's very cool because then, it, like I said, it, with it only being two hundred dollars without insurance, other ones are like six hundred bucks, and you don't have to use a needle. Yeah, so you can go out, and I can enjoy crab again. I think that's what I took from the article. Was that if you have I would, a like, severe confirm before you go <laughs> try you sure? it? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Just 
huffing <laughs> epinephrine. Dive right in. Yeah. Yeah. One spray before, one spray during. Mm-hmm. We'll be fine. You know, they're still digging into the life and times of this Ryan Routh. This is the guy who, he didn't take a shot at Trump, but he had guns with him and stuff. He certainly seemed to have that intent. And um, this guy had plenty of trouble with the law. Politically, he's been all over the place. Uh, His son said that uh, his dad's been mentally ill for a while. And um, one of his former neighbors in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, said that uh, the family was weird. The guy was weird and uh, that he kept a horse in his house. And uh, that I guess that's one thing that made him weird. The only thing I seen, they had a horse in the house. I mean, an old live horse in the house. But <laughs> like I said, the guns and stuff and all, I meant, but yeah. They were, oh, I mean, kind of weird in the house where the living room is at. Put hay all in there and the big old live horse. I told all my friends because they didn't believe me. I took a picture of the horse and now. Hmm. Good size, nice llama. Is that the same lady, the good size, nice llama lady? Sounds like it's pouring rain there, and she's talking. That woman's name is Kim Mungo. Um, and Ryan Ralph uh, used to live next door to her and, and, and kept that uh, horse in the house, and she told all of her friends. There's a horse in this house. There's a horse in this house. There's a horse in this house. So, um, indoors? He didn't have like a indoors. pen? Indoors. Huh. The home full of hay is what she said. And she would tell all of her friends. Nice way to rat the guy out, Kim, before all this, Michigas. She said that um, she would tell all of her friends. The guy had a horse. And uh, he wasn't supposed to have that. It's frowned upon there in Greensboro, North Carolina. But like yeah, it's frowned upon anywhere to have a horse inside your house. Not if you live in a barn. I guess. <laughs> then you are in their house. Then the horse tells all his friends, yeah, they were really weird. They had a guy living in their barn. Where Jesus was born, so why isn't it good enough for this guy? Exactly. Uh, but this guy's got a jacket going back to the 90s. Uh, bad checks, felony firearm possession, possession of a stolen vehicle, multiple counts of possession of a weapon of mass destruction. Uh, he was uh, allegedly making bombs. Uh, the guy had moved to Hawaii and had left his house The neighbor said he moved to Hawaii and left his house empty. I want to know if it's empty except for the horse. Was the horse still in there? She's like, they didn't bother me and I didn't bother them. They had a horse in their house and all kinds of guns. Kim Mungo living there next door. And she said that he owned a business called United Roofing and uh, told cops that... um, I guess she was one of the first people to identify this guy. He said he was a nice guy, but clearly he had a whole lot of things going on. And that the guy was uh, kind of largely estranged from his own children. And she said he never expressed any political views. Now, to me, the other thing I saw in this guy, this should have been the biggest red flag that the dude was psychotic is that apparently he was an absolute beast on the pickleball court. (laughs) A guy who was his partner uh, playing pickleball there in Hawaii, he said he was a really mild-mannered guy, but he was an absolute fiend on the pickleball court. He had to get it out somewhere, man. Yeah. He said he played really hard, and he was just okay. You know those people. Every you've all we've all played some kind of sport with somebody whose reach exceeds their grasp. They're really into it to the point where it's like uncomfortable to kind of play with them because they're so into it. And for this guy, it was pickleball players. He said he was the only one out there who would dive for the ball. And pickleball. <laughs> so this guy was intense. Well, yeah, he had a horse living in his living room. 
This guy's all over the place. You can't that, pin you can't pin this guy down. That was his pickleball opponent. He was so used to playing against the horse. Yeah. Which is much stronger and horses faster. are all muscle. Yeah. Take a look. I still don't know how a horse um how those tiny legs can support the giant body. I don't well, they, uh, I don't my my older daughter was an equestrian for 16 years and I still to this day don't understand the physics of horses. Because they're all muscle. Until you get way down to the skinny ankles and the hooves. I know that's, you know, if a horse breaks their leg, nothing they can do. They got to shoot them or whatever. Send them to the glue factory. I feel like science needs to figure that out. That's I feel what I'm like saying. They, they, they put a cast on the horse for a little bit. It seems so, there's such a high probability that a horse will break a foot or a leg and the only recourse, because they're so heavy, they, it's not like they can... They can't stand on Yeah, it. they can't favor their yeah. broken leg. Yeah. But just looking at horses. You get a horse wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and they are majestic. Well, you know those little things that they put smaller animals in, the little yeah, wheels? Little and, wagon yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah. But the, he said that um, on and off the court, this guy was always personable and good-natured and chatty. And so kind of to a person that they've talked to that had interactions with this guy was like, he was strange. And yeah, he had guns. And yeah, he had a horse in his living room. But we didn't think he'd do anything weird. <laughs> like try to kill the former president. Said he never seemed to have much money. He was often borrowing pickleball paddles from other people. Because his were really chewed up because of the diving. And the horse. Yeah. And the horse. I mean, feeding the horse clothing the horse that can't be cheap you know how much horse sweaters cost a lot they're made from horse hair so the actual this poor animal feels conflicted about wearing it in the first place but it does get cold there in north carolina and if all you have is a horse hair sweater um it makes them feel weird they're giant so they said, yeah, the guy would do odd job repairs and blah, 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 but that he, he didn't have any money. So they're really getting a, uh, they're really getting a, a wild array of uh, people who allegedly try to take Trump out. But all these people are like, I don't remember him talking politics. He was just diving for the pickleball. And they said he wasn't very good. So between the horse and the pickleball, who could have ever seen anything strange coming from this guy? I got Opeth tickets for you later on. They're going to do a show. They have a brand new album coming out in a few weeks, as a matter of fact, if you like Opeth.